Hey everyone, it's Mark Skipper Mark. Today Matt is going to put a vacuum canister in his car and the reason why is when he rebuilt the engine and put a bigger camshaft in it, the power brakes stopped working very well. That's pretty common with a big cam. So Matt's actually gonna tell us a little bit about that and I just wanna thank you for watching and hope you have a great day. This is a vacuum canister uh, to hopefully hold enough vacuum for the power brakes because with the bigger cam it doesn't produce enough vacuum. I don't know if this will work without a electric vacuum pump, but I was gonna try this before buying a electric vacuum pump because this might work. Are the pumps expensive? The pumps are like $200. And how much does something like that go for? This was, I think like $30 with all the hose and everything to hook it up. So, not too much. So Matt is going to mount this in the front of the grill area where the original charcoal canister was mounted. It's going to actually sit right on the car itself. So what he did was he got a felt pad and he's going to use some JB Weld, which he picked up at a store, you know, a local store. Um, to adhere the pad to the surface. Because this surface has that crackly kind of paint, nothing will stick to it. So the JB Weld should hold it. And he's just gonna put a dot on the bottom just to give it some protection so it doesn't vibrate right against the, uh, you know, the car and make a lot of noise. So JB Weld consists of two uh, tubes. One is probably like the sticky and then one is probably like the hardener or something. Yeah, this one's the hardener. So you take equal amounts of um, both and you mix them together with a spoon or a toothpick or something. One of the concerns I had was uh, the felt pad. I asked Matt if it would be a problem if it got wet and he said it shouldn't really be an issue because it doesn't get wet there but he also doesn't drive this car in the rain. So he's only putting a tiny, tiny amount of the JB Weld on it. And it's stuck. So it turns out the adhesive was pretty sticky on the uh, felt piece from the store. Not sure if the JB Weld was needed, but it doesn't hurt to have a little extra oomph on there to give it some more stick. So this bracket came with uh, the canister and the extra bolts that he has are going to be used to mount it to the bracket which will be mounted to the car. This is the bracket that Matt is going to use to mount the canister to the car. He picked it up at Home Depot and uh, painted it to match the car. I drilled that hole, that hole and that hole bigger to slip these two bolts through and then this one to actually bolt it to the, the uh, car itself. It's in place, but he's got to now put the nut and bolt on the bottom, which means crawling under the car. Thankfully, it's within easy reach and relatively easy to do. Okay, you good? Is the wrench on there? Yes.
Thanks for the help, Nance. All right, it's installed. So now the next step is to hook up the hoses. For now, he's gonna leave these bolts uh, long, but if they start to bother him, he can just cut it off with a hacksaw or a sawzall or whatever. So the, the hose goes to the intake manifold for vacuum? Yep. But the engine doesn't produce enough vacuum, so the hose is gonna go to here mm -hmm. and should hold vacuum in here. So when you hit the brakes, this is gonna get vacuum from the stored vacuum in the canister, not directly from the manifold. The original hose on the car was an 11 32nd of an inch. The directions say to use 3 8 inch hose. We are also using fuel hose instead of um, a vacuum hose. And that's okay to do because a fuel hose can handle a lot higher pressure than a vacuum hose. But you never want to go the other way and use a vacuum hose for fuel. These are the instructions from the canister itself. They don't actually say where to mount uh, the canister, so we're going to try it up front. Here's some instructions we found on the internet of how to install it. Putting some thread sealer on for one of the hoses. Does it matter what side you put it on? So is the canister just a like a hollow thing? Yeah, it's just a can to hold the uh, vacuum pressure. Ooh, I don't like how that comes out the back. No, I gotta tighten it. This is a vacuum gauge. It'll tell us how much pressure is inside of the canister. For a good power brake feel, you want about 10 inches of uh, pressure. That's a filter to keep uh, dirty air from getting sucked into your intake manifold. All right, so the vacuum canister is installed. And again, what it's used for is to increase the vacuum to the power brakes. When you have a big cam, they often don't make a lot of vacuum and the brakes need vacuum to work and you press on them and the brakes are very spongy and almost feels like your car is shut off when you're trying to brake. So what this does is this can stores up vacuum and holds it and then when the brakes need it they pull the vacuum from this can. It's basically a reserve. Matt's just tidying up the hoses with some zip ties and then we're gonna start the engine and see how it goes. Hopefully it'll work. All right, we are about to start the car, Matt is, and we're going to give it a test to see how the new uh, vacuum canister works. the brakes now. 
Not good? No, I might need a little electric pump. No, there's still not very good. <laughs> Alright, let's go over to the All right, Matt and I took a ride, and um, it didn't really make a difference. The gauge is right where it needs to be. It's around 10, but unfortunately it didn't help, and the brakes still don't work very good. So what do you have to do to it now? You could put a vacuum pump, and you could put vacuum pump so it eliminates the hose going to the intake, or you can put it in between there. I'm not exactly sure how it has to be wired in or okay, plumbed so in or whatever, but there, you just add something yeah, else. you just got to add a vacuum pump. I just want to put that in and see if it did anything right. before you go and, you know, buy a pump. And Yeah, why spend 250 bucks if you don't need to? Yeah. Or 200 or whatever they cost. So. When we got home, the pressure on the gauge was 10, which the sheet says is perfect for power brakes. So it's possible that it's helping, but it's just not enough. It, it actually worked a little bit, Matt said, like when he first stopped, but then if he had to stop again kind of quickly, you know, like in, if he's in traffic and just inching forward, that's when it really wasn't good because um, it, it didn't build up enough pressure. But for now, we're going to call it a day. Thanks for watching and appreciate all of you, everybody who's watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.